Hi, I'm Ashley from With Ashley and Co. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. Yes. Um, so you had some amazing outfits in this film. Very punk rock, goth, princess, goddess. Were they difficult to move in? Did you have any favorites? Just what was that like? You know, uh, since this is the mommy blog, we can know all the secrets. So I did this movie um, when I was still breastfeeding. So I had, we had little tricks and secret zippers um, to get me in and out of them um, and comfortable enough, you know, so I could get to my baby. <laughs> um, but some, this is like one of my favorite things about this movie is the costumes and our costume designer Autumn had built a um, lookbook that I got to see before I actually um, got there. And I wanted to work with her so badly because she had just had an aesthetic and a take on this character that was so fresh. You know, you want to play homage to the great witches, but you don't want to repeat something you've already seen. And she just had this, she's also very cool herself. Um, and she just had this take that was kind of like a goth Barbie, right? Like a goth punk witch Barbie. And um, yeah, part of the, the fun of it was just really going for it and, and um, supporting her vision and, and collaborating with her was just so much fun. So your character can kind of create things, you know, the door and how the apartment changes and she's got the magic. So if you could create anything, what would it be? I guess like just whatever I want, whenever I want it all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, being a mom, I would love to like just sometimes just create like the toys being put away um, <laughs> or like create like a beautiful lunch or dinner that my baby also wants to eat. Um, <laughs> it's so funny how your priorities change so much when you become a mom. Like now when it's lunchtime, I'm like looking in the fridge, like what am I do? What am I gonna make? Is he gonna eat it? Um, yeah, I, and I feel like I do always like pick up toys, just picking up toys <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Yeah, that's our life. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. You were absolutely delicious as a villain. We have watched the movie now, I think, four times. And um, I wanted to know how, what was it like playing the villain this time? I loved it. You know, when I first was sent the script, I was like, oh, this is, this is, like my dream this is like a role of a lifetime I I love opportunities to be over the top and um unexpected and you want to play characters that have a lot of colors and so what I first was so drawn to is the fact that she was very funny and fabulous and childlike herself at moments and then truly terrifying and evil and deranged and like sick <laughs> like a total psychopath um so for me as a performer it was just so so great to be able to do a little bit of everything and never know what's coming and like sometimes and she would just like scream at the kids and it's like really jarring um so yeah playing like the big bad over the top was just like too much fun hi i'm lynette with fantastic life loved the role although it was a little bit scary um, so I, I would love to know what your process is for getting into character. Yeah, so my process is kind of always like, you know, I read the script, sit with it, see what sticks out to me the most and sort of like work my way in. Um, I work with my longtime acting coach. Her name is Marjorie Ballantyne. And we just start like breaking it down together and playing around um, with like a feeling um, and really working from a place of her backstory. You know, we have that unexpected twist in the movie of her backstory. And that was a really great place to work from. And that informed a lot of the choices that that we made um, and that I made to to bring her to life. Um, that informs the color of her hair, the color of her shoes, how she expresses herself. Um, so uh, I feel like also the hair and the makeup and the wardrobe really inform that as well. Um, yeah, this is just one of those parts that's just like, so fun and like the more I would spend time putting it on its feet I practiced my lines at home with my baby who just would laugh and laugh and laugh 
um, just like you just sink into it more and more each day. So that's how, that's how I sort of got into it. Just like play around more and more each day until I find the right temperature. Hi, Kristen. I'm Amanda from Guide for Moms and Crazy Amanda Rex on YouTube. And you had to work with it all. You worked with the kids and the animals and the creepy critters. And I just wondered, you know, how, what was it like on set? Yeah, so it was also during COVID. So it was all like very separated. Um, I would often be doing my scenes by myself um, or with tennis balls on C stands or just an I line, an X, um, which was a totally new thing. It's because you're working with kids who can only be on set a certain amount of hours. And it's because of COVID and everybody needs to be like kept pretty separate. Um, so I would say that was a unique and interesting challenge. However, it was kind of great for the part because Natasha is sort of, I, pl- I sort of approached her like she's always on a stage. She's always like performing and always like, you know, kind of over the top. Like I thought about like old movie stars like Joan Crawford and Betty Davis and how, you know, funny and big and over the top they were. So um, the process of actually filming it was was very interesting and unique and um, and ultimately really fun. <laughs> Fantastic. So thank you again for joining us. We're very excited. So you always play these characters that have a little bit of a wicked side. And I'd love to know how much you relate to some of these characteristics in real life. It's, I think it's probably no coincidence. Um, you know, I sort of like, this is my toolbox and I funnel the characters like in and it comes out through me. So um, it's still, there's a little bit of me, I think in all of the, all of the roles, but to different degrees. Um, I for sure have a lot of fun doing it. Um, I like to change it up and I feel like I've been so fortunate in my career to always do something different. Like I, I have a lot of friends who have maybe are frustrated that they've only played like the wife or the girlfriend. And I actually don't think I have ever played a wife or a girlfriend. <laughs> I actually don't. Uh, so, um, you know, any opportunity for me to, to do something like new and fresh um, and unexpected is, is kind of what I relish in. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hi. So some of I was laughing at some of the things that you would say to the kids in the movies, because I felt like as a mom, I could kind of see myself in you when you were saying these things, because sometimes I get a little snarky with my kids if they've been too much. And so I know that you have a young son. um, So have you ever been tempted um, as a mom to kind of throw that snark in there? Not yet, but you know, <laughs> never say never. He's so little still that um, he's just like a delicious little angel. Um, so not yet, but I, 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 I did practice my lines on on my son. Um, I would try like scare him a little with my with my lines, and he just thought it was the funniest thing he's ever seen. And he he like also does the wicked laugh. Um, so that's one fun thing that came from this movie. We have our little secret like wah language that he also he also does. Uh, yeah, luckily we're not there yet. He's still like delicious and innocent. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for taking the time today. I'm Tessa Smith with MamasGeeky.com and watched the movie last night with my daughters who are eight and ten absolutely loved it and when it ended they literally started spewing all these ideas for a sequel so I'm curious if there maybe could be one and if there would be is it something you'd be interested in oh yes I would be there in a second um one second I mean we wouldn't even have to like finish the sentence (laughs) Um, because I had so much fun playing this part but I also love the movie I I got to see it a few weeks ago and I didn't know what to expect and I was just like oh my God, I love this movie. I love the sets and I love the message, you know, about being different and how that makes you, you know, special. And that's what makes you awesome. I think that this is the kind of movie I would have just devoured as a kid. But I also think for the parents, there's such great stuff like the Lost Boys references and all the references to the stuff that we love and grew up with. I loved, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and those big set pieces and Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and Beetlejuice. 
And it just felt like there was, and The Lost Boys, my set, one of my favorite movies. I just felt like there was like something for everybody. And it was nice to see something so fresh and artistic and creative. So I'm glad to hear that you guys liked the movie with your kids. Um, did they think it was too scary or did they, did they, uh, they, 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 did they jump? <laughs> yeah, they jumped quite a bit. My 10 year old said it was really good and not enough for nightmares at her age. My eight year old said anyone under eight will get nightmares, but I didn't because I'm brave. So <laughs> I feel like I've been hearing that from, from kids too. Like I, I've heard of a couple of seven year olds being like, it wasn't scary. I thought it was cool. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that you guys could watch that as a family. Hi, good morning. My name is Monica Neong from My Life is a Journey. And I would like to know, now that we are talking about the scary things, if anything scary or freaky happened and said while you were filming. Uh, you know, we, all, we did get to, nothing really scary or freaky happened on set, but I think because we were filming in the fall, like during spooky season, um, we were in Toronto and the leaves were falling. We really did like play up, you know, the Halloween and the fun of it. Um, my baby really enjoyed my blue hair. I didn't want him to be like too freaked out by my look. So I would just be in my regular clothes in my, in the trailer where he was with his like toys. And then I would go to set and like have like a corner I would throw my clothes on. So I wouldn't disrupt his world. Um, but he thought the blue hair was really funny. And we did like wear our skeleton onesies, like more days than Halloween. Um, so we, we kind of leaned into it and, and had fun with it. Hi, I'm Jennifer from Real Mom of SFB. Um, and I was wondering if you had uh, read the novel that the movie is based on, or did you approach it in a more pure manner and just go strictly off of the screenplay? Yeah, so I went with the screenplay because everything did happen kind of quickly. And when you have to like go away for work um, with with a baby, it's challenging and uh, it's a whole other thing. It's not like the old days when I could just like throw some T-shirts in the suitcase and go. So I got the movie and immediately had to get going um, to Canada through the quarantine and wanted to like do some work on the on the character. So we just kind of dove in, the director and I, um, on, on the script and making like digging deeper in places and doing any tweaks. But the, the writers um, on this film were fantastic. Um, I have gotten in touch with J.A. White, the author of the books, um, to send my love. And I know the books are very, the book is very well loved. And I believe there's a sequel for the books coming out. Um, so um, I didn't get a chance to read the book, but I am so, so grateful that they adapted this and that, that this part existed for me to play. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karen from Rock and Mama. And again, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Um, since we are in the fall and Halloween, I wanted to know what your favorite scary story or movie is. Or both. Yeah, I love, I love like the holiday, you know, the ho I love Halloween. It's the best. And I love all of the holiday movies that come out around now. Um, listen, I like the scary, like harder stuff. Like I'll watch Saw and I'll watch The Conjuring. Um, I'll watch all of that, but I also just love Hocus Pocus um, and those kind of like classics that you can rewatch every year. I think my favorite like horror movie would be The Lost Boys and The Craft and Scream. Like those were like, you know, the like defining horror films from like my teenage years. So my heart's still, still there. With you filming um, separately, how do you feel like the sets actually like helped your imagination with, you know, staying in character, bringing her to life and making it so believable? Yeah, I, I felt the same way. Like when I saw it, I was just like, wow, this, these sets look so good. Like the night nursery mm -hmm. and the, the staircase um, and also the, the, the style of the, the storytelling within the movie. Um, mm -hmm. I just love that aesthetic because Natasha really only is in the apartment. So I didn't really totally know what to expect. I had seen drawings and I had a good sense um, of David Yaravetsky's style, our director, um, which I love. I think that he has a real creative, fresh, you know, vibe. And I think that he's a director to watch. 
Um, so yeah, I, when I saw the movie, I kind of didn't know what to expect and I was absolutely blown away and it doesn't always happen. You know, I think when, when you make a project, you either catch lightning in a bottle or you don't. And sometimes things turn out great and sometimes they don't and you just never know. And I, I just felt like when I watched this movie, like, cool. I was like, this is so, this movie is so great. I'm so into it. And it's just so up my alley. Hi. So I wanted to know um, about Easter eggs. You talked a little bit about like the Lost Boys references in there, which, you know, it's great, you know, searching for the undead. And, um, you know, there's definitely like there was the Hansel and Gretel reference, like right off the bat with the witch in the woods. What other kind of Halloween or spooky, um, you know, children's tales type references are in there that we should expect or look for. Yeah, um, without spoiling it too much, but I, I definitely felt like there were some some Beetlejuice similarities. You remember on Beetlejuice, they would go outside of the apartment, there'd be the sandworm. Obviously in the my books, we have don't have a sandworm, but there's something. Um, I also, you know, her gloves with the crazy nails is very like Freddy Krueger-ish. Um, not as like vicious and not as insane and violent as that, but there's like that nod um yeah and there's just like you know a little bit of like witchy stuff I mean I watched a lot of I watched Angelica Houston and the witches I watched Cruella de Vil I mean even though she's not a witch she's witchy um so there's a lot of like different flavors in there um you know I I, I remember growing up like I love the scene in Honey I Shrunk the Kids where they're like going through the blades of grass and it's so larger than life it's almost like a theme park and I felt like the night nursery had some of that, like also like Willy Wonka when every all their sets, like they can eat everything. Like the night nursery had like that sort of larger than life um, vibe. So I think there's um, there's a lot of sort of stuff in there that um, that parents will like and kids will like. And there's a lot of like good Easter eggs to eighties homage and horror movies. Hi, Kristen. Thank you so much. I'm Susie from Happy Miss Moments. So you were scary and fabulous. Me and my 11 year old loved it. Now we're trying to convince my six year old son to watch it. What message do you hope kids will learn from this movie? You know, I just think that what I love the aesthetic of this, of this movie. I love the little kids kind of like a, kind of like a punk rock vibe and like cool, like different clothes. And he really like expressed himself with um, how he looks and dresses and his art, right. His drawings and his writings. Um, and that thing that he got picked on at school is actually what makes him awesome. And I think that's a message that is so great for kids and adults. And I think we all um, respond to that. I know as a kid, it was like weird and different myself. Like this is the kind of thing I would have just eaten up. Like this is a movie for like the cool kids and like the cool might not like look the same way as, as we think it does. So I think that's, that's a great takeaway for this film.